Uh, joining us once again is Christopher Morris. He's a professor of global health at George Washington University. Professor, thanks again for being here. My pleasure. Um, one of the things that I don't, uh, uh, th that I want expert help understanding is um, the importance of testing. We saw this 30% jump today in the number of reported cases in South Korea. Um, and that's a very alarming statistic on its face. And then it becomes apparent that that large number of new cases is because South Korea is very aggressively testing people, trying to get hundreds of thousands of people testing, tested. Are the tests reliable enough to, that it makes sense for South Korea to be doing that? And, and how key is testing to trying to control this epidemic? Well, so I don't know anything uh, specifically about the tests that South Koreans are using, and I haven't had hands on the CDC's test either, although we know that's had some problems. Um, I think testing is absolutely critical mm -hmm. because without that, we're, we're going on, you know, suspicion of, of, you know, based on symptoms or nothing at all. And so we really need to be drilling down on, on you know, people coming back from, uh, from areas where they may have been exposed and also within communities we need to start testing to look for community, um, community transmission. We need tests available at a massive scale to be able to do this. And yes, they should be able to be, able to be made reliable um, and reproducible and, and I, I, I do very much hope that the CDC is uh, working the kinks out of its test now and that we'll see that, that uh, that's made available broadly here in the U.S. very soon. In so. terms of community transmission, I know that's a term of art, but in, in epidemiological terms, why is it important when you start to have cases where you don't know how the person got it, where you can't trace their infection to a specific person who spent time in China or who spent time in a place in Italy where they know they've got a lot of cases or in Iran? Like, we, we've, we saw the German health minister today call a press conference to say, we, Germany, are now in the phase where we've got community transmission. We can't tell you where these infections are coming from. It appears that the United States is in that position for the first time as of tonight with this case in Northern California. Why does that matter so much? Well, if you don't know where the tail of that chain is um, and you don't know where it's coming from, you know, you have to ask yourself, what else are you really missing in, inside the community, right? So you don't have all the information. You're not tracing all of the cases and all the transmission events. And so, you know, it's really tough to put a, put a quarantine on or, or an isolation uh, protocol in place that really targets all the right people. So we can't do this based on, on travel history alone. We can't do this based on symptoms alone. Um, How do you do it? How do you so, decide? And so testing is one way, right? So, so really having access to, um, to a rapid and, and you know, field forward test that can, that can really get that answer quickly in the hands of field epidemiologists, that's going to be quite important in terms of trying to get our hands back around this thing where we can, we can try and put it back into under containment. But we, right now, we are not there. We see people uh, around the world uh, wearing face masks of various kinds. Um, I was struck by the photos of American service members on bases in South Korea stopping cars at the gates of U.S. military bases in South Korea, doing spot temperature tech checks for everybody coming in in a car to the base, and the soldiers themselves wearing, um, wearing face masks. We've seen it just with you know, civilian travelers sure. everywhere, too. It, would, it strikes me that that is a measure that would tend to be more effective for somebody who is infected, who is trying to avoid infecting others, than it would be for somebody who's not infected, who's trying to avoid getting exposed. But that's me literally making that up based on what the face masks look like. How do you approach yeah. it from a public health perspective? Yeah, I mean, that's, I, w I would tend to agree with that. I mean, it, certainly it's, it's far more effective to put someone who's, who's actively shedding and symptomatic with, with this virus into a mask so that they can't spread those respiratory droplets as, as readily uh, to people in, in, their, in their near vicinity there. But um, people who are really in close contact with patients, like healthcare workers, now they're going to need those masks, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, and they'll have um, you know, what we call an N95 mask usually that, that gives them a high level of protection against uh, respiratory droplets. But, um, but everyday people walking around, uh, you know, that's really it's a tough mask to wear for long periods of time. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, it's something that's really not recommended at this point for the walking well.